Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to those of you that are here with us. It's lovely to see you. Welcome too to those on live stream. And my apologies if the picture on live stream is upside down or sideways on. We have tried and failed. But we hope you can hear us and see us even if your neck has to be in a strange position. My apologies. I have to begin with sad news this morning, I'm afraid. Margaret Coveney died yesterday morning on her 99th birthday. Her family believes she was holding on for her birthday because she asked her daughter, is it my birthday? And her daughter said, yes, it is, Mum. Happy birthday. And she died a little while later. She died very peacefully at home, having been very frail for the last couple of weeks. So our thoughts are with her family today. But what a fantastic age. And she's had a wonderful life, which we will celebrate in, in better times, probably next year. Well, life changed at seven o'clock last night. This will be the last service in church for a while. We will go back to providing a recorded service for you, for at least for the next few weeks. I'm awaiting the detailed guidance as to exactly what we can do and what we shouldn't do. Those of you that are on the rotors or due to be involved in the services in the next few weeks, bear with me for a couple of days and I will let you know precisely what we can and cannot do and what role um, you will have in that. Uh, but we will do the best we can for the next few weeks and then we'll see. We have a plan in place for Christmas. It's called Plan X at the moment and it's evolving as we go on. So we will see what we can do. It's a time of uncertainty and it's a time of anxiety. We have to also look beyond ourselves. There are many countries struggling with COVID still. There are many countries in a very similar situation to ourselves. And there are countries who face, on top of that, the challenge of atrocity in France this week and earthquake in Turkey and Greece. So our world is an uncertain and anxious place for many reasons. We carry with us the reassurance and the hope of God's love, and we need to take that out into the world. That is our calling, and the world needs us to bring that reassurance and hope that we as Christians hold. So I, I send you with that message today. Today's a really good opportunity to take that on board because it's All Saints Day. And in the big picture, we remember the faithful witness of Christians down through the ages. And boy, did they face challenges. So 
It's All Saints Day. It's the beginning of a season of remembering and thanksgiving. And we gather together today, really pleased that we can gather today. And we will go on through the next few weeks as best we can. But please take care and stay safe in whatever way you need to. So we begin our service with the words of welcome. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We join in our opening prayer. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, looking to Jesus in penitence and faith. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. A collect for All Saints' Day. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we rejoice in the faith of your saints, Inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Fred has our reading this morning. A reading from the book of Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs on water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have some music before our Gospel reading.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Bless you, we say, when someone sneezes, or we used to. I'm not sure we do now, I'm not sure we stand that close these days. Or we say, bless you as thanks, as approval for kindness or cuteness. We talk about being blessed with good health or a good sense of humour, good fortune, or for some, the gift of children or grandchildren. Society regards the rich, the powerful, the glamorous or famous, or people who display any combination of those attributes as fortunate. But these are not the people that Jesus tells us will receive blessing. What does Jesus mean by being blessed? It's not a pat on the back. It's not to do with good fortune or luck. Blessed, he says, are the poor, the mourning, the meek, the hungry, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers and the persecuted. And for some, those statements will only come to pass in the future, in the fulfilment of the kingdom. The poor in spirit, not necessarily poor in material terms, but humble. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. There is no will be for these, simply theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' words of blessing mean that those in difficult situations who persevere faithfully, will receive in abundance. This is a picture of a future filled with hope. Blessedness in God's kingdom implies embracing values and attitudes that are the reverse, perhaps, of those we normally think of as bringing happiness and prosperity. And the community of the blessed is characterised by action, striving for justice, being proactive in showing mercy, and working for peace. So this is a promise of hope for the future, but also a challenge to revise our understanding of success and to live in a way which makes a difference in our world. On this All Saints Sunday, we begin the season of thanksgiving and remembering. We celebrate our belonging in Christ to that great multitude of men and women which includes those we call saints. One definition of a saint is a man or a woman in whose life the church has seen the grace of God powerfully at work. A saint is someone who gives us a glimpse of God, someone who shows God or mirrors God to us in some way and reveals God in living their life in humble service to others. That passage from Revelation presents a rich and wonderful picture of that multitude from all tribes, all nations and all cultures. There is no limit 
in geography, language or ethnicity. We hear that these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. And now they stand around the throne of the Lamb in white with palms worshipping. Their rewards are great. They have found a freedom and they receive shelter. There is no more hunger or thirst. They do not feel the intense heat of the sun, but are guided to springs of the water of life. And their tears are wiped away. There are echoes, aren't there, of Psalm 23, the promise of green pastures and still waters, heads anointed with oil and a table spread before them. Here too, echoes of the Beatitudes that we've just heard, that those who hunger for righteousness are now filled. Those who were persecuted have inherited the kingdom of heaven and those who mourn have been comforted. We all know people who are in that multitude. We all know saints, those who have died who inspire us and those living in whose faithful witness and actions we see something of the grace of God. Today, we think particularly of those from this church who have gone before us. Those who over the years have worshipped in this church and lived in this community. We celebrate those who we remember and cherish. And as you remember those whose names are familiar to you, take a moment perhaps to reflect on a particular person who has gone before from this church community. What can you take from that person's example and witness, their faith, the way they lived their life? I want to share with you a lovely poem by Malcolm Geit called The Last Beatitude. And blessed are the ones we overlook, the faithful servers on the coffee rotor, the ones who hold no candle, bell or book, but keep the books and tally up the quota, the gentle souls who come to do the flowers, the quiet ones who organise the fate, church sitters who give up their weekday hours, doorkeepers who may open heaven's gate. God knows the depths that often go unspoken amongst the shy, the quiet and the kind, or the slow healing of a heart long broken, placing each flower so for a year's mind. Invisible on earth, without a voice, in heaven, their angels glory and rejoice. After this service, we will go outside and unveil a memorial just in the shrubbery outside. The slate is engraved with the words, remember before God all those who have worshipped here and give thanks for their witness. As we celebrate the saints, we ponder how we are to live out our baptismal vocation to be faithful witnesses. We are promised that if we live out that vocation, we too will find freedom. But sanctity is only partially about our actions as Christians. It is also the work of God. The saints are God's saints. God creates them by grace. No one became a saint through determination or ambition. It is a divine gift. God's power at work in human lives. And it's manifest in many different ways, for some have become saints because of their teaching or for their care of others, for their wisdom or their humility. And like all humans, the saints have had faults and limitations. God knows all our faults and all our limitations, but his grace at work in human lives has created saints as examples and inspiration for us all. So let us reflect for a moment on that image of the multitude, blessed by the grace and mercy of God. We celebrate our belonging with them in Christ. Let us take their example with us into, uh, into our lives this week. Let us rejoice in God's saints today and always. Amen.
So we join in the words of the affirmation of faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come to our prayers. Do we want some music before our prayers, Janet, or not? Music before our prayers or not? Yes, music before our prayers, okay. At the rising of the sun and to its setting, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for our church, both here and throughout the world. Inspire our leaders in their work, that they may make the best decisions they can to move your church forward in these troubled times. We pray that our church may increase in number through our work of mission and that more people may come to know you, our Lord. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation in this troubled time. Not only are we dealing with the pandemic and a new lockdown, we are also approaching the end of the Brexit process. Whatever our own views, we offer this prayer together for our nation. God of hope, in these times of change, Unite our nation and guide our leaders with your wisdom. Give us courage to overcome our fears and help us to build a future in which all may prosper and share. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As winter approaches and job losses due to coronavirus and other factors increase, we pray for those who are living in poverty with little food and no heating or are homeless with no shelter from the weather. We pray also for those people providing support via schemes such as food banks. God of compassion, your love for humanity was revealed in Jesus, whose earthly life began in the poverty of a stable and ended in the pain and isolation of the cross. We hold before you those who are homeless and cold, especially in this winter weather. Draw near and comfort them in spirit and bless those who work to provide them with shelter, food and friendship. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all the refugees in our world, remembering especially those people including children who died in the English Channel this week. Almighty and merciful God, 
whose son became a refugee and had no place to call his own. Look with mercy on those who today are fleeing from danger, homeless and hungry. Bless those who work to bring them relief. Inspire generosity and compassion in all our hearts and guide the nations of the world towards that day when all will rejoice in your kingdom of justice and of peace. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all people being wrongly held captive in our world, those who are being held hostage, those wrongly jailed, and those being held due to their religious beliefs. Merciful Father, we cry to you from the depths of our concern for those wrongly imprisoned or held captive, for those trying to secure their release, that the ways of peace and diplomacy may prevail over acts of violence and aggression, that their captors may know a change of heart through him who was sent to proclaim liberty for captives and to set free those who are oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the sick. As the coronavirus creeps back into our lives, we pray for all those affected by this or any illness at this time. In our parish, we pray for Judy Smart, Joy Alcock, Richard Sewell, Betty Russell, Michael Ooston, Sarah, Guy Shepherd, and Dorothy Corney. And we also pray for those known only to us. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick. And lift up all who are brought low. That we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. At this time, we remember those who have died. From the parish, we remember Jim Benny, Mary Rich, and Margaret Coveney. And at their year's mind, we remember Barbara Tudor Jones and Stuart Robb. Lord, in November, we call to mind all those whose lives are done. We thank you that their time, now completed, however short or long, sad or joyful, is gathered up, looked on and known by you. We offer up remembrance, those whose absence we feel daily, those who have shaped us, those who have nurtured us, the people we are grateful to have walked with, all those we hardly knew but wished we'd known better. We give thanks for all they gave, and all the future owes them. Lord, your love embraces every person who has ever lived. You promised that you lost none. May your spirit make us always thankful for all our gifts of love and cherished memory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. On this All Saints Day, Lord, we thank you for the saints now gone before us whose faith defined their living and their dying, those who loved you more than their own lives, those who are still mirrors of your love. We celebrate the saints who walk among us rejoicing while they walk in your footsteps, making your name known in a fractured world against injustice, prejudice, hatred, evil. We stand with those who sacrifice themselves to bring about your kingdom here on earth. Lord, your grace shines in the lives of saints. We thank you for their example, their holy words. Your spirit inspired them. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire us to be saints in your church now. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your 
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Through Christ our Lord who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Do offer one another a sign of peace from where you are. Just a couple of notices about what I know is going on in the next week. We will have a service here on Tuesday morning. Um, we won't, I think, have the following Tuesday service on the 17th of November, but we will have a service here on this Tuesday morning. Please let those know who are not here or may not know by email um, that they are very welcome in church on Tuesday morning. The, there is... Um, an All Souls Remembrance Service from St Nicholas next Saturday afternoon. I believe we will be going ahead with that service. We were going to do it by Zoom, and as far as I know, that will still go ahead by Zoom. If you would like names of loved ones read out at that service, do please let the parish office know. Uh, we need to know probably by Wednesday, please, um, so that the list of names can be prepared for that service and the list will be read out during that service. Next Sunday is Remembrance Sunday. There will be no public service at the War Memorial in Harpenden um, for obvious reasons, but we will have a special act of remembrance. Um, that act of remembrance will be part of the service at St Nicholas, but they're making a recording of it, which we also will be able to use. So I will use that as part of our service next weekend. Um, so do watch next weekend and see, and you will be part of the act of remembrance for the town as well. I don't think I've forgotten anything, I hope not. So, at the end of our service today, please do go, as usual, out through the back door, as long as you're safe to do so. There is hand sanitizer there as you go out. And then make your way round to the flower bed at the front if you would like to join us for that short ceremony to unveil the memorial there, and we'll just have a short part of the service there. Somehow, miraculously, the sun is shining. <laughs> I'll see you there. Um, we will um, stop the live stream, but we are going to make a video recording of the ceremony outside, which we will then post later. So we join in our closing prayer. Glory to God, whose power at work among us can do infinitely more than all we can ask or conceive. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. God, who has prepared for us a city with eternal foundations, give you grace to share the inheritance of the saints in glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.